how is everyone doing tonight? Um, you know, I've been, all day I've been looking through, you know, all the model data and everything that's been coming in for Hurricane Irma. And, you know, I, I just wanted to make a video detailing, you know, my thoughts and, you know, a basic overview of what's going on with this hurricane because it, it, this is such a complex system. And, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions about, you know, where is it going to hit and, you know, how bad is it going to be? And the simple answer for that is it's it's too far to tell. I mean, we, we look here, Irma is located, according to the National Hurricane Center, you know, east of, uh, excuse me, east of the Leeward Islands by Tuesday. It should be there. Uh, it's currently moving west at 14 miles an hour and has max sustained winds of 150 miles an hour, making it a lower level category three hurricane. Now we go in here and look at the track of Irma. Uh, here you have it, 8 p.m. Sunday, so today at 8 o'clock is where it was located. That's about two hours ago. Now they're expecting by the 11 o'clock update that Irma may have strengthened a little bit. Maybe it, maybe it hadn't, but by this point here, or even here, they're expecting it to become a Category 4 hurricane, which would mean winds of about 130 miles an hour. Now, you know, that all depends on where the storm goes, how warm the water is that it goes over, and all that, you know, whether it hits, you know, Haiti, Dominican Republic would, because the area is very mountainous, could weaken the storm a little bit. It, there's, a, it's, like I said, it's, it's very complex. Now, as you can see, the storm, general motion is west here before taking a slight turn to the northwest towards the US now from here from here to here the tracks pretty set and so that's why you see how thin the cone really is they have a good idea that's where it's gonna go but once we get past this point there's a lot of disagreement within the models about where this storm is gonna go now I mean, when this all first started, there was a huge discrepancy between the Euro, which is the European model, which I really like to look at, and the American GFS model, the Global Forecasting Systems model. Now, when this first started, the GFS model had the storm coming up through here to the Bahamas, curving off and hitting up towards New York City. Now the GFS has the storm sort of coming up to here and shooting off like that. And surprisingly enough, these the European GFS models never tend to agree, but surprisingly enough, there is an agreement here between the European GFS model on a face level. I'll get more into that in a little bit. There are a couple other models. One has it kind of coming up through here and then shooting up here, which doesn't seem very likely to me. It's a possibility, but it doesn't seem very likely. Uh, a lot of models have it doing, could come up through here, it could shoot off back this way. There's None of the models really have complete agreement and that's why the cone doesn't really extend past this point right here because there's no agreement within the models now if we go and take a look at the models we have the GFS model here so the American model this is supposedly the next update if you were to say this would be about midnight tonight we have Irma located right here and now if I shift and you can shift the region here over to the United States we'll be able to see you know sort of what the GFS has in store for Irma as it moves along. Now this model shows, you know, um, predicted precipitation with the system and, you know, how much rain they expect to fall in a specific area. It's generally pretty decent in the short run. Long run can't completely be trusted except for really with tropical systems, rain-wise, because we know tropical systems drop a lot of rain. Now, as we push the model along here into the coming days, you see typical Florida Late summer, summer after summer after winter storms you're gonna get across here. We get a little bit of a dry period. Don't let all this green fool you. It probably won't. This right here is an incoming cold front that should drop temperatures into the low to mid 80s across the area. You can see it kind of moving through here. Uh, don't pay attention to really any of these low pressure and high pressure systems. By the way, this one is. This one is most models generally about a high, a high pressure system developing in the Midwest U.S. and then moving eastward. This is just probably built associated with the um, cold front along here. Now as it pushes, th and this high pressure will play a huge role in where Irma goes. Now if we look down here we can see Irma by Thursday start to peek into the picture down here towards the Bahamas. As we keep going 
here it is. This is Hurricane Irma sitting down here. And as you see, the cold front has already sort of moved through here. Now, if we come through here, or as you see, Irma is continuing on its track here through the Bahamas, heading sort of towards South Florida, if you will. But watch what happens here. This is Saturday, excuse me, um, September 9th, Saturday. We come through here, and watch what happens as we get to the very front of the Bahamas here. The GF model, GFS model has it shooting off towards the Carolinas. Now, this is fairly common with a lot of hurricanes because, as you, if you don't know, the Gulf Stream runs right along here, which is a uh, stream of very warm, more, excuse me, very warm tropical waters that flows south and north through the Atlantic. And, that, and hurricanes feed off warm water, so naturally, they want to stay with this warm water. Now, one key feature with the GFS model here is it has this high-pressure ridge sitting here over the Midwest. And what that means is it's going to push the storm back to the east because it's not allowing the storm to move as far west as it would like because there's a blocking system there. Now, as you see later, it moved on, and then this high-pressure system seems to move off to the west, therefore allowing the storm to come back west as well. Now, if we look, now if we take a look at the European model, which most, <clears throat> excuse me, meteorologists tend to like, but is the European model because it's usually more accurate, has a lot more data going into it from past years, a much older model, so it has a lot more data to feed back on. Now, excuse me, if we go to regions and the eastern Atlantic where Irma is currently located, you can see Irma sitting right here. Make sure I have the right thing like this. You can see Irma sitting right here. Now, I know our model doesn't look very impressive, but just trust me, it's quite the impressive storm. It's kind of regenerated an eye, if you will, here. Um, and then the storm will probably jog off to the south a little bit before moving more west and then up towards north of Puerto Rico and north of the Lesser Antilles over here. Now, we run the model here, and you can see Irma moves right here. Right here is Puerto Rico. Irma is sitting right here. And it moves just north of Puerto Rico, just north of Haiti in the Dominican Republic. Now, if we uh, switch over to the eastern U.S., here's the cold front I was talking about again. Come through here. Here's Irma sitting right here, very similar to the GFS model. Mind you, this is Saturday, September 9th, so very long way out. So a whole week. And it, similar to the GFS, comes here and shoots off. Why is that? As you can see, it doesn't even hit the Carolina. It shoots off completely this way. What's the difference here? Well, if we look at the, if you can generalize here, the high pressure system that was sitting here with the GFS is much stronger and more present here over the mid middle of the uh, eastern country right here. What that does, again, it forces the storm back this way. And this would be very good for the United States as it would keep Irma basically completely offshore. We might get some few bands on shore, but nothing too extreme. But if we go to the northeast, I would like to show you guys something. I go to regions and the eastern U.S. What we can see, if I go back to the GFS model, excuse me for a second, and go to MSLP and Precip, is we see this low pressure system that is the remains of Hurricane Harvey. Or excuse me, <laughs> what am I talking about? No, it's not. This is um, later on after Irma would move through. If we go to currently, what we have is that cold front coming through, and you see all this rain up here. That's a low pressure system that's sitting up here. What that'll do is, as that moves through, this low pressure system sitting right here would begin to pull. It's and the cold front is supposed to begin to pull the storm with it. Now this is according to one run of the model. So, but as you can see, as it moves away, it begins to tug at the storm pulling it back that way until the blocking high sort of over here sort of moves away and allows Irma to fill in there. Now, I usually the models are very good in the short term. However, in this, there's so much time between now and landfall that it's really tough to get a good idea of what Irma's going to do. Um, what forecasters like to do is they'll run a model the people who actually make the models will run the model 50 times. The, the 50 times they run each model. And the model won't give them... Say